with the Real Housewives of New Jersey. In fact, her and Dolores had a little thing going on there. But she's even a bigger star now. She's doing a tremendous job down in Florida as a pro-Israel voice. And as close as I am with Trump, she's probably closer, believe it or not. She is uh, Siggy Flicker. Siggy, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Sid. I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm great. You know, a couple of years ago, and uh, you may or may not remember this, but I was asked by my friend Heshi Organbaum to be the uh, one of the Grand Marshals at the Israeli Day Parade. This dates back, I don't know, five, six years ago, and showed up mm-hmm. uh, that day, and I, I saw my friend Cindy, and she was standing there with you, and I watched the show, knew who you were, obviously, and you also served that day as a Grand Marshal, and it was on that day, again, maybe five or six years ago, at that Israeli Day Parade in New York before you moved out of New Jersey, that I came to the realization, what a great voice you are for Israel. So this has been going on for you for a long time, huh? Long time. Born in Israel during the Six-Day War in a bomb shelter. My father ran Yad Vashem's Righteous Gentile Division for over 25 years. He survived the Holocaust because a priest hid him his, and his whole family in a convent in Evian, France, and helped them over into Switzerland. And growing up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, my father used to always say, Stigalit. Be careful, because anti-Semitism has a way of always showing its face. Like every 75 years, the cancer comes back. And you've got to be tough enough and strong enough and proud enough to look at it in the face and defeat it. And I am so proud to make my parents happy, because let me just tell you something. I get such a kick out of fighting it every single day, and even more proud that I'm a personal friend and I stand by the greatest president in the history of America Donald John Trump. You'll get no argument from me on that. Uh, like I, I said, mean, Trump and I are pretty close like you guys are, and I love him and can't yep. wait for him to win again. Uh, by the way, uh, Siggy Flicker and Sid Rosenberg also were the last two celebrities to have their 8 by 10s up by the register of the Tenafly Diner. That's an absolute fact. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so when you were living in Tenafly, which I was too, I lived on Elm and Serpentine for a short time and starring on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Did you experience back then any anti-Semitism here in New York or not really? No, no, I've never experienced it. Well, listen, I don't think that the liberal entertainment industry likes strong, powerful Jewish women. I mean, they kind of like to, you know, hire useful idiots that, you know, how to be hot messes. And, you know, That's true. Um, <laughs> and, and, and true. for me, it was like, I'm not going to shrink myself so people feel comfortable. I am who I am. I'm a ray of sunshine. I've got a lot, a lot of great energy, but I know how to call out a lot of useful idiots. And at the end of the day, I can't play dumb because I'm not dumb. Um, that show was just a brilliant platform for me to do what I am doing today. Yeah, and, that works. Uh, and there's I, others. I mean, you yeah, know, I, I become I, I become close with uh, Dr. Ira and Lizzie Savetsky. Now, she quit the New York franchise because she yeah. did experience anti-Semitism. She was, she's a great voice like you. And just last great week, uh, yeah, Jackie Goldschneider was on this show last week. She's still on New Jersey with her nice husband, Evan. So there are some ladies out there. You at the very top of the list, you and Lizzie, that are out there uh, talking, which we need. Look, I say this all the time, Siggy, and, and uh, you know, I, I kind of put myself in harm's way, my, my family, too, because this is the number one show in New York. I've got a huge voice. And we've got, uh, this isn't Boca, where eight people show up in front of town center mall. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands of pro-Palestinians lining the streets from Bay Ridge to Times Square. But I don't care. Yeah, don't worry, Sid. They're not going to be here for a lot longer. You you, you just got to look into Donald Trump's plan. Listen, we're going to, listen, infiltration from within. First of all, Pro-Palestine, there's no such thing as Palestine. People have to do their, you know, the left has a history of supporting oppression. To put 300,000 terrorist sympathizers in the streets of Washington, D.C. on such a short notice, you need a well-oiled machine. And his name is George Soros. They are all paid. They come out there. It's just like Black Lives Matter. You regurgitate it, and here it is. All of a sudden, they're all showing up. Please. I don't, I, I believe it as much. People are so uneducated until what is Palestine even? Palestine is doesn't just exist. another name for Israel. Right, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. even exist. Right, well, stupid. I mean, you got to go back to the British mandate. They called it Syria <laughs> Palestina right. for a reason. They were trying to infuriate the Jews. Yeah. I mean, you go back to the first Israeli soccer team of Palestine. They were all Jews. You didn't see any Hamas terrorists or sympathizers in that crowd. So here you go again, and we've got to fight the fake news. And unfortunately for us, the news media is complicit in the propaganda. 
Oh, I agree. And we have to yep. fight it. Yep. We have to yep. fight it every day. But just like when um, Black Lives Matter came out and everybody was like, yes, I'm supporting Black Lives because guess what, Sid? Black Lives do matter. But then a year into it, you realize, wait a second. All their leaders took money and bought mansions and cars and Rolls Royces, and it really didn't go into anything that funded black lives. I'm out of here. In a year from now, this is a great educational. People will be educated about the Middle East, and people will understand that Israel pulled out of Gaza in 2005, my friends. 10,000 Jews who grew up in Gaza left for what? Because we wanted peace. We wanted peace, and then for the last 10, 15 years, rocket after rocket bombarding us. And now you're going to rape, behead, and burn my people and expect Israel to sit back and listen to the clown nation, the United Nations? Israel right now is in Gaza, and guess what? The people of Gaza are screaming. They can't do it, you know, because CNN won't show you this. They're screaming to be freed. They have to give Hamas their money. They have, to, they have to do everything and pretend they love Hamas. They're prisoners of Hamas. So we have to eliminate this terrorist organization. And Sid, listen, everybody always comes to me years later and says, you know what, I should have listened to you. You are right. And not that I always want to be right, but, you know, I do. I, I, I'm going to be right about this again. I'm gonna, we must free the people of, of Gaza from Hamas. And they could call themselves any name. They could call themselves the Palestinian people, the Gazian people. I don't care what they go. They're really Jordanians. But we got to free them from the terrorist organization. Their name is Hamas. It's equivalent to ISIS. And well, they will be eliminated. Okay. Well, I, I, from your mouth to God's ears, I believe you. This is uh, Siggy Flicker, folks. You know her from Real Housewives of New Jersey. But she's kind of to, uh, to do much uh, bigger and better. So a couple of days ago, because I lived in Boca for 16 years. I don't know if you know that, but I lived there yeah. for 16 years. So my wife, uh, Danielle. How did you leave? Uh, Why did you leave? I left because I got an opportunity to host mornings and, and middays at okay. WABC in well, New York. And reason. you can't make okay. the money down there doing radio and TV that I do here. So I had to leave. But I, but I have to tell you, three days ago, my wife, Danielle, says to me, I think I want to go back. And I said, D, come on, man. I worked 25 years to get to the point now where everybody in every state across this country knows New York, Sid. They go together. I said, I don't know. She said, Sydney, look what's going on out here. See, you're in Florida now, and you left. You went the other way. You're smart. And I know once in a while there's a rally at FAU. Or there's a you know rally in the northern part of the state in Gainesville or in Tallahassee. But when you see what's going on here, I work on uh, Third Avenue, okay? I held a rally at Cooper Union yeah. two weeks ago outside of NYU. When you see Siggy Flicker, NYU, Columbia, all these universities, that when we were kids looked up to as great universities across the nation, mm -hmm flooded with thousands of these animals. These kids are animals. I got to tell you, you look at New York a whole lot differently. You just do. I, I, I understand that. I know it's hard. And, I, and, and I'm, you know, I, I say this, and I also have a house in New York that I, I go to at least every other month. And I know it's difficult. But we have to. We have to stand strong and be proud Jews and understand that when a nation loses its moral compass, this is what happens. Education becomes indoctrination. Entertainment, the entertainment industry becomes hypnotism. Criminals become leaders and lies become the truth. But it is a cycle, and I promise you there is light at the end of this tunnel. We have to stay strong. We have to stay resilient. We have to keep on going out there with our mezuzahs, with, with, with our Jewish pride, because, I, I mean, I, I want to remind everybody who's listening Every nation, every leader, every dictator, anybody who has ever come up against the Jewish people has lost. Genesis, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And yes, we as the Jewish nation, the Jewish people are going through some really tough times right now. We are discovering who's really for us and who was never for us. I know it's hard. But no one promised us that life was going to be easy. Hmm. We pick ourselves up and we keep moving forwards with our heads elevated. And people in New York are doing a fabulous job. I mean, how about Sid, that, that whole story about a Roni coffee where everybody quit yes. and then yes. the next day you're lying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is what happens yep. when a community, when we come together.
No, that's true. But I had I, I had a guy in uh, Farmingdale, and and uh, I actually uh, that poor guy had a diner in Farmingdale. They stopped coming to his place. His uh, whole workforce practically quit. I talked about it one day on the air. His diner sat about twenty people. He had people five hundred people lined outside the door. So people are coming to the rescue. I would ask you this: Look, I I, I love Trump. I'm going to vote for Trump. He loves me. I think he's going to win. Right now, he's up five of the six major swing states. But let me ask you this: Let me play worst case scenario, Siggy Flicker. You know, we got robbed last time by Joe Biden, the Democrats. What if Donald Trump doesn't win in 2024? Then what? Sid, I can't tell you what I know, but there's no shot of that. There's no okay. chance. You, you, you were meant to live through this time. It's called the Great Awakening. And I'm not no crazy conspiracy theorist. I don't believe that Michael Jackson is alive and Princess Diana is <laughs> going to come out of the ground. <laughs> well, let me just say something. The elections this time around are going to be completely different. Donald Trump will not only win in a landslide, mark my words, but on top of that, because he's a Gemini and he's a fighter and he goes in on top of that because he has everything lined up. The man is a genius on top of being the nicest, most generous, kindest, and the biggest supporter of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Let me remind your listeners, his daughter is a Jew, his grandchildren are Jewish. I've been with him. I've traveled on his airplane. I'm a member at Mar-a-Lago. I've had dinner with him, my husband and I, multiple times. The way that he is, the way that he loves America first, and the way that he talks about Every day, we common people, we the people, he is in it to win it. And not only is he going to win it, I'm going to say something that everyone's going to, oh, you can't talk about that. On top of it, the election of 2020 will come out that it was a fraudulent election and it was stolen from Donald John Trump. There is one man standing between tyranny and the Constitution, and that's Donald Trump. And uh, but trust me, I don't get paid to say this. I don't need to say this. I am telling you because I was, I have a gift of Golda Meir. I have this intuitive feeling. I know winners and I know losers. And when I see a loser, I know to run or, you know, exit classy and say, listen, this is really not going to work. You go on your way. I wish you nothing but health and happiness and make sure you lose my number. <laughs> this man is a winner. He's a fighter and yeah. he's going to the very end. And you have over a hundred million people, the silent, they're silent now. They're silent now. They're not going to be silent next election. You know, I've had on this uh, show. We are losing just, yeah, no, our country. Yeah, I agree. I, and, I tell you, Siggy. That, I, I'm very good friends with Tom Holman. Yeah, I like him, you too. You have to keep talking about yeah. Tom Holman. We have over 50 million illegal aliens in this yeah. country. We yeah. don't know why they're here. And over 600,000 jihadis are here. So you're looking at the Middle East, and a lot of people are like, yeah, free Palestine. They don't even know what river and what sea it is. They have no idea what they're talking about, but their classmates told them to cover up their face like a terrorist and go out and say free Palestine. They don't even know what they're saying. But let me just tell you something. We have a major problem in America. Don't look to Israel. Israel will win that war. It always does. Look here, because the next fight is here in your backyard. And I have people, Jewish and non-Jewish, who are scared for their children, scared for the future of this country. All these people, all these evangel evangelicals, 100 million of them, that don't really care to vote, everybody is coming out in masses to vote because we know that the greatest country in the world is the United States of America. We're the home of the free because of the brave, and we will not let this country down. You know, in the past couple of months, Siggy Flicker, I've had Nancy Mace on this show, and She'd like to be vice president. I've had Carrie Lake on this show. She'd like to be vice president. I've had Tulsi <laughs> Gabbard on this show. The more you talk, I know that uh, Trump was in my city on Saturday at UFC 295 with Tucker Carlson. Yep. People want Tucker uh -huh. Carlson. I think Siggy Flicker would be the Never. perfect choice. No. Running mate for <laughs> Donald Trump, you'd be a great vice I'm president. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to tell you one thing. My whole life, all I ever wanted was to meet a man who loved me with all his heart and soul. And to be a mom and a wife and, and to, to live this life that I'm living now. I was, I was, I don't know why Hashem has blessed me with this, with this wonderful husband who says to me, you could do whatever you want. You could, I pay you five times the amount that anybody would ever pay you. I just enjoy your company. The children enjoy you. I, I just enjoy my freedom of doing what I want when I want, and how I want to do this. I am living the perfect life. Right now, my only mission is for Donald Trump to be the President of the United States of America and for 
my 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 soldiers in Israel, the people of Israel, Am Israel Chai, Kapara Niala Amshali. May God please bless bless this nation for what it's gone through for 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 everything. My heart is with bring home those hostages, yep. save those people. But the world will be a, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to have to go through another 12 months of hell. And I'm talking about hell. Just prepare. It's going to be 12 months of hell. I, I, I like to give out straight facts and not, you know, you know, brush it on with butter and sprinkles on it. After that, Donald Trump's going to be back. The whole world's going to change because we were, we'll be respected again. We'll be, we'll be you know, terrorists when, when, when you have a leader that you respect. Instead of a leader that can't spell Bob backwards, Bob backwards. <laughs> That's very good. The world uh, wants it a different way. Bob, <laughs> you can't. Uh, I listen, mean, everybody's mo- like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> and, and, and the American people should want to believe that he no. got eighty-one million oh, votes please. campaigning from his basement more please. than Barack Obama, please. who I hate to admit was a popular president. He I mean, This is just a joke. We're being we're the laughing stock of the world, but. Not for long. Not for long. Our most important question. You ready for this? New York Prime or Abe and Louis? Oh, my God. First of all, never even bring that up. New York Prime by far. Thank you. Those are all my boys, Johnny Geo and Nick That's Wood Johnny and Berger. G, baby. Yes. And one my more for you. Bro- Tataria <laughs> Ramonia or, or, or my, dear, my dear, dear friend, Peter Kramer at Mateo's, who loves the Jews. He's Jewish. Who'd you say? Who'd you say? Mateo's. Who the first one? Oh, uh, the first one would be, I oh guess. My God. That... Are you kidding me? Peter's one of my best friends. There you go. Let's me too. You. There you go. <laughs> Peter and Vinny, yes. hands down, one of my best friends. And John Gio, I gave birth twice at New York Prime. <laughs> Joshua and Sophie. Let me just say something. New York Prime, Mateos, and then if you want to, li- you know, another good one is Trattoria Romano. Yes, or that's, that's the first place Whatever I mentioned. Is. That's the first one I mentioned on Palmetto Park East, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. Listen, you're wonderful. My phone is blowing up. I mean, I, I'm not kidding you. God Even, bless you, Sid. Thank you. Uh, thank uh, you look at this. what you're doing. Even Jimmy Breslin's kid, Kevin Breslin, said you're amazing. How about that, Siggy? Aw, <laughs> Angel, God bless you. God bless everybody. And you know what? Sid, seriously, you're doing a mitzvah. Thank you. Keep on helping out all those businesses that need it right now because all these useful idiots, who don't even know what the river or the sea is, and they don't even know. <laughs> they also don't know how to spell mom, dad, or Bob backwards. Keep on helping out all those you know, people, and, and keep on doing what you're doing. I love you. God I love you, you, too. Thank you, Siggy. Man, she is great, huh? Beautiful and smart. And and uh, at one point, believe it or not, a uh, reality star on TV, and now becoming, and now you know why she's one of our big voices. She is absolutely terrific. Excellent job, Siggy Flicker, former Real Housewife of New Jersey.